So it's time for us to talk about how to solve quadratic equations, day one. All right, you need to be given some sort of equation that can simplify to ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a is not equal to zero, because that a term not being zero is what makes it quadratic. So if you get rid of it, then you have something linear. There is a serious vocabulary issue with solving because you are going to be asked on the EOC in particular several different ways to do the exact same thing. So whenever you solve, of course you are finding x, but depending on the context, sometimes they'll say find the roots, usually in relation to a function, or they'll say find the zeros, usually in relation to a function or a graph, or they'll say find the x-intercepts. Ultimately, these things right here all mean the exact same thing. Quadratic equations are complicated enough to warrant multiple methods of solution. You can graph it because remember, solving means the same as you know finding the x-intercepts. Um, the thing you have to remember though is that you have to set it equal to zero, graph, and look for x-intercepts. But the problem is that oftentimes when you are asked to solve a quadratic, you will get an irrational answer, meaning an answer that has something like a square root of 2 or 3 or 15 or whatever, in which case your calculator does not give you exact answers. It will give you an approximation. So I'm going to tell you right now that graphing is a great way to check. It's not even a good way to check. It's a great way to check. Because when you solve an equation that's quadratic, sometimes you can perform an operation and you will lose a solution. So if your only method of checking is to plug your answer back in, what might happen, especially with quadratics, and it happened with absolute value equations as well, you can miss a solution. Because if solving means to find the x-intercepts, you can think about how many possible x-intercepts a quadratic graph will have. It can have zero, meaning it doesn't hit the x-axis. It can have one, meaning its vertex hits the x-axis. Or it can have two. So if you solve an equation, you find one answer, you plug it back in, it works. It doesn't mean you found the solution set because you might have missed an answer. So always graph to check. Now a second way of solving is something that's very familiar to you. It's using the properties of equality in an opposite or an inverse fashion to undo what has been done to x. So that means you divide both sides, you multiply both sides, you add or subtract from both sides. Now here's the deal with the pose. It is great for vertex form. So if I give you a quadratic equation that's in vertex form, then you can totally use opposite operation. But if I give you standard form, you can't use the pose because this bx term messes everything up. So if your quadratic equation has the bx term, that linear term, you cannot use opposite operations. And that bx term forces us to have alternative ways of solving quadratics. And one of them, and the first alternative method you're going to learn, and some of you already know the song related to it, is the quadratic formula. It is literally a formula where you plug in numbers and then simplify and it solves the equation for you. And it has to be in standard form. And day two of solving quadratics is dedicated to the quadratic formula. I don't like using the quadratic formula. I prefer these last two methods. Factoring is probably the fastest way to solve. So if a quadratic is factorable, then you're going to want to solve it by factoring. And basically what factoring is, it is the undoing of Leo B multiplication or FOIL. It undoes FOIL. Now the problem is not everything is factorable, which leads us to completing the square, which is probably the best way to solve a quadratic. And what completing the square is, it's basically the conversion between standard form to vertex form so that then you can use the pose. And what it does is it makes factoring work for all quadratics. So now time for some examples. I want to solve x squared equals 5x minus 6 by graphing. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to set it equal to 0 because I'm looking for x-intercepts 
and x-intercepts occur when y is 0, and right now nothing is equal to 0. So I have my x squared, and then I'm going to subtract off 5x from both sides, and I'm going to add 6 to both sides, and then I get the equal 0. So when I plug it into my calculator, though, I'm not going to say equal 0. I'm going to say equal y. So I have x squared minus 5x plus 6, and my job is to look for the x-intercepts. And so I want to graph it really quick. And it looks like I have two x-intercepts, and they look like they're happening around 2 and 3. So I'm going to go to my table, and at the value of x equals 2, I have 0 for y. And at the value of x equals 3, I have 0 for y. So therefore, my solution set to this equation is 2, comma, 3. Now it's time to use some pose. And so we remember the fundamentals of solving equations with inverse or opposite operations. I must undo what has been done to the x. And in this case, it has been squared, it has been doubled, and it has 60 subtracted from it. And I must undo them in a sort of reverse order. So I'm going to add 60 to both sides. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Now I need to undo x squared. And the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So what I have to do is square root both sides. Okay. I am going to introduce the square root into the problem. Right after exponents, we talked about radicals. And I told you that if you introduce the square root into the problem, you have to add a plus or minus. And so then I'm going to get x equals plus or minus the square root of 35 which means my solution set should contain positive 35 and negative 35. This is when the graphing thing comes in handy because the one thing that people forget when they solve a quadratic using the pose is this plus or minus. And I can't tell you how many people are going to, on the test over this stuff or a quiz, going to say that this quadratic has one answer. And they're going to leave it like that because they didn't check on their graphing calculator to see how many x-intercepts that graph has. And it's going to have two. So you must be super careful and remember, don't just be flippant and take square roots. Be conscientious and aware. And remember, you put the square root in, you put the plus or minus because it's a quadratic. It can have two x-intercepts. So my solution here is negative root 35 and positive root 35. So now on to this example, I have, exam I have x squared on both sides, and so I need to pick a side to move the x squared to, doesn't matter. I'm going to move them over here, so I get 3x squared. Now the reason why I chose this example is because I know people are going to see a 12 on this side and a 12 on this side and say, oh hey, those like cancel out and it's just going to be 0. But is this a 12 and is this a 12? Well, this one is definitely a 12. But this one's actually a negative 12. So what I'm going to have to do to get rid of it from this side is to add 12 and get my 24 equals 3x squared. Divide both sides by 3. I get 8 equals x squared. And I'm going to introduce the square root now, which means I need to add my plus or minus. And if you think your answer is positive root 8 and negative root 8, you would be half right. Because technically, yes, those, are, those numbers work. However, this is unsimplified, and your answers always have to be simplified. 8, remember, is 2 times 4, so it becomes plus or minus 2 root 2 is equal to x. So my solution set contains negative 2 root 2 and 2 root 2. So let's see another reason why everyone likes vertex form. I can solve this equation very easily. I have x minus 1 quantity squared equals 12. So if I want to solve for x, there are really two things you can do. Okay, so if you see this as something you have to simplify first, you are going to make your life very hard because you have to use FOIL or Leo B and you get x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 12 and then you have to move stuff over and then you have the bx term and that. You're going to have to use something like the quadratic formula. But if you can get it into this format, you can realize, well, hey, you know what? 
this x has a 1 subtracted from it, and then it's squared. So what do I do first? Well, why not take the square root first to get rid of the square? And remember, I introduced the square root, so I have to put the plus or minus. So then when I simplify, if I square root a square, those two things cancel each other out. It's the whole point of opposite and inverse root, uh, operations. So I get left with x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 12. Now over here, you should recognize that this is frowny face because the square root of 12 is not simplified. So then you go over here and you simplify the square root of 12 to 2 root 3, and you go ahead and you put that back in. All right, and I'm almost done. All I have to do is add 1 to both sides, and I get x equals 1 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3. Now let me explain to you what this means, okay? What this means is that x is equal to 1 plus 2 root 3, and x is equal to 1 minus 2 root 3. So my solution set has both of those numbers, and I can write it in solution set notation. But let's say, hypothetically speaking, I say I want an approximation, so an approximate answer. Now, you cannot really find the approximate answer really easily here. Um, you need to understand that when I write it like this, I'm really being lazy in writing these two numbers uh, in one sort of step, all right? So when I do the approximation of one like this, I have to separate it out and find both one plus the two root three, which is approximately 4.46, and then I need to find the version with a subtraction, and I get approximately negative 2.46. And now it's time for you to try some problems on your own. I want you to solve and give exact, simplified answers to these quadratics.